Welcome to River City Kids Online! Well, let's get started with a fun song. Gather your families together, jump up and down, put your hands in the air, do whatever you want. Here we go! Staring into your eyes makes my heart come alive. Suddenly brought to life when I met you. Reaching beyond the skies, running deep, stretching wide. Perfect love realized here with you. Now this love is for real, you will never let go, never let go. Oh. And it's more than just words, love beyond my control, out of control. Everybody, welcome to River City Kids Online. I'm your host, Pastor Jamie, and guess what? Today we're starting a brand new series called Bugs. Why are we choosing bugs? Bugs are little creatures that can teach us some big lessons. And today we're starting with our very first bug, the praying mantis. Here, check this out. Everybody. My name is Mo, Mo Skeeto, and I'm here to tell you about my new virtual reality video game called Splat. Some games have you finding fake animals and creatures, but mine, you're finding real creatures, bugs to be precise. The slogan is, gotta catch them all entirely. I had to add that last line in for legal reasons. Anyway, each bug kit comes with a bug guide, bug catchers, and pajamas. Oh, no, wait, those are mine. 
Today, we're gonna do a demonstration on how to play the game. With these state-of-the-art bug catchers, you'll find all sorts of bugs, which is a goal of the game, but the ultimate goal is to find the bad bug. Mm. When I was a kid, my mommy used to say, good night, sleep tight, don't let the bad bugs bite. <laughs> Ever since then, I was obsessed with finding a bed bug of my very own, so I created the game. Today, we're in my backyard looking for bugs to catch. Oh, how silly of me. You're probably wondering what a bed bug looks like. Well, you see, that's the problem because I've never actually seen one, so I drew this picture of what I thought they might look like. See? Oh, hang on. I think I see something. You know what that means. Time to put on my virtual reality goggles and say, gotta catch them all entirely. I feel good about those tosses. Let's go see what we got. Applesauce. Let's see what's in the other one. A fish? Ugh, yuck. Let's see what's in this one. Oh, it looks like we did catch something. Let me check my bug guide. Hmm, let's see. A ladybug? No. A Kit Kat? No. Oh, I know what this is. This is a praying mantis. They call it a praying mantis because its hands are in the shape that looks like it's always praying. Now, I don't know if it's really praying, but it can serve as a great reminder to us. Every time we see a praying mantis, we can be reminded to pray to God. You know, sometimes I forget how important prayer is, but that's what's so cool about bugs. They're small creatures, but they can teach us big lessons. Prayer is and always will be our connection to God, so we should pray every chance we get, and the praying mantis can remind us to do that. Well, I better set this little guy free back into his natural habitat, but I have heard that praying mantises are delicious. <laughs> oh no, I was wrong. I may have gotten that fact wrong, Ugh. but I do know this. Today in your lesson, you're gonna learn about when to pray, how to pray, and why you should pray. It's gonna be amazing. Well, until next time, gotta catch them all entire. So there you have it, we're using the praying mantis. Now, as you know, a praying mantis, his front legs are in a position that makes him look like he's praying. Have you ever seen a praying mantis? You could probably find him outside, as a matter of fact, right now. I don't know if a praying mantis is really praying, probably not, but it helps us to remind us that we should always be praying. As a matter of fact, our scripture verse this week says, keep on praying. 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Hello class, my name is Professor Buzzby McFly and I am a bugologist, which means I study insects every day to determine what valuable lessons they might give us in order for us to become better Christians. Today's bug is the praying mantis. Now this bug is very interesting because of the way it looks. You see it has very big bulbous eyes attached to a triangular head connected to an elongated body with wings on the back, and it also has two forearms. When I mean forearms, I mean the two arms in front, not the four on the bottom, which means there are six arms total, which are actually legs. But they look like they're praying, but not all six, only the two forearms, which are the two, not the four, I think. Probably. I don't know. But what that does remind me is the power verse for today, which is... Keep on praying. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Bazinga! That power verse was superlative. Now, what I need is for all the boys to stand to their feet and say the power verse on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Keep on praying. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 That was fantastic, boys. You may sit down. Now, all the girls stand to your feet and say the power verse on the count of three. Here we go. One, 
two, three. Keep on praying. First Thessalonians 5.17. Fantastic job. You may be seated. That power verse is a good reminder of how important it is to constantly be in prayer. When your life is good, you should be praying. When your life is bad, you should be praying. When you accidentally mix concoction X with concoction Y and you accidentally make a mutating caterpillar, you should really be praying. Trust me. Now, I need everyone to stand to their feet and say the power verse on the count of three. One, two, three. Keep on praying. First Thessalonians 5.17. Excellent job, everyone. You may be seated. Well, that's it for me. I'm back off to the lab to study another bug. Well, I'll be reading books like a bookworm and searching for articles on the worldwide spider web. Until next time, this is Professor Buzzby McFly. Bye! So, you need to keep on praying. That verse tells us that throughout our day, we should always be thinking about the Lord and having little conversations with Him as we go about our daily lives. <laughs> You guessed it, it's time for today's big idea. Today's big idea says this, P-R-A-Y, lift your eyes up to the sky and pray. Well, you get the idea. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna say it one more time, you say it with me, and then we're gonna hit the big idea. So here we go, get ready, get your hands positioned like this. Get your pointer fingers out like this. All right, here we go. P-R-A-Y, lift your eyes up to the sky and pray. Pray. Okay, I can't get it. Maybe you can. Go ahead, hit the big idea. Hey, what's the big idea? P-R-A-Y, lift your eyes up to the sky and pray. I can't seem to get it. Well, if you did it, a good job. Give yourselves a big round of applause. If I can get it, I can't get it. We'll do it one more time. Go ahead, hit the big idea. Hey, what's the big idea? P-R-A-Y, lift your eyes up to the sky and pray. Hey, I, I caught it that time. Add, add some applause and yeah, oh yeah, yeah I did it. They're all cheering for me, all right. Oh, finally did it. Well anyways, that's today's big idea. Hey, guess what? It's time for a Bible story. You know, there are stories in the Bible that Jesus told. They're called parables. And guess what? Jesus told a story about a couple of guys who went to pray. He told the story of a Pharisee and a tax collector. Now, in the Bible days, a Pharisee was somebody who was the religious leader of the community. And a tax collector was somebody that people did not like. Well, take a look at this.
7, did you see? That Pharisee, he wanted everyone to notice him. He wanted everyone to think that his prayers were big, loud, using long, important words. But did you see the tax collector? He went off by himself, and the Bible says that he pounded on himself. And he said, Lord, have mercy on me. I need you. And you know what? That's what prayer is all about. It's coming before the Lord, not with a bunch of fancy words, but to say, Lord, I, I just need to have a conversation with you. I need to talk to you. That's what prayer is. Prayer is when we're talking to the Lord. One of the things that kids and even adults have a hard time with is knowing what to pray about when it's time to pray. You know, we say all the time, make sure that you have a special time set aside where you can pray. And that is important. But the thing I'm always asked is, what am I supposed to keep praying about? How long am I supposed to pray? What should I pray? Well, let me help you. First of all, the Bible never tells us that there's a certain amount of time that we're supposed to pray. Instead, our, our scripture verse in 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, keep on praying. In other words, have conversations with the Lord all the time. But then sometimes it's important for us to set aside some time where we can get alone by ourselves and simply talk with the Lord. And there's an acronym that we can use to help us think about prayer. P-R-A-Y. Remember our big idea? P-R-A-Y. Lift your eyes up to the sky and pray. We're going to use each letter in the word pray to help us know what to do we have our special time of prayer. Let's start with the letter P. We're gonna use that letter to help us think of the word praise. Whenever we get started with prayer, we should take time to praise God and tell him how great and wonderful he is. It takes the focus off of ourselves and puts it onto Jesus. It also gets our hearts ready to be connecting with him when we give him all the praise and worship that we can. The next letter is the letter R. We're gonna let that letter represent the word repent. Repent means to turn away from sin. And it should be a clue for you to look at your life, examine your heart and say, Lord, is there any sin inside of me that I need forgiveness? And if there is, take that moment and be forgiven. You know, you're gonna connect so much better with the Lord when you feel forgiven and you know that you are forgiven. So the R is repent. The letter A stands for ask God to help others. You know, you don't wanna be selfish during your prayer times. So many times when people pray, they say, Lord, I need this, or God, give me that, or Lord, hear me. And instead, what we should do is say, Lord, help my friend, help my family, Help that grandparent. Help that person that I don't get along with. Or maybe there's somebody you don't even know, but you know they have a need or they need God's help. Pray for others. So the A, ask for others. We come down to the last letter, which is the letter Y. The letter Y stands for you. Yeah, at this point, then you can ask God to help you with anything that you need. I mean. You've taken the time to praise the Lord and put the focus on Jesus. And then you've repented and said, Lord, if there's sin in my heart, forgive me. Then you asked God to help other people. Now you can pray for you and ask God whatever it is that you need help with. So during these next few moments, I want you to remember that acronym, P-R-A-Y as you take some time to pray. As a matter of fact, during these next few moments, we're just gonna put on some quiet music right here during this time. And I'll remind you what to do, and let's go into a time of prayer. Ready? Let's take some time to praise God and put the focus on Jesus. For these next few moments, just say things like, Lord, you are amazing. Jesus, I love you with all my heart. Lord, I put all the focus on you. I worship you. I praise you. 
Say things like that. You can even repeat those things over and over. Take a moment and let's praise the Lord. Did you take some time to worship and praise the Lord? I hope so, and I hope it's prepared you to connect with God. And now is the letter R, repent. So take just a few moments. Look at your life, look at your heart. Is there anything you've been doing you should not be doing? Things that you need to be forgiven? During these next few moments, simply pray a prayer where you can say, Lord, here's what I've done tell him because the Bible says to confess and then say, Lord, please forgive me and help me do a better job next time. Take a few moments if you need forgiveness and take care of that now. I hope you took advantage of a moment to be forgiven. Well, we've praised the Lord. We've gone into a moment of repentance. And now the letter A, ask God to help others. So maybe start thinking, are there people that I know that need God's help? Uh, maybe a family member, maybe a friend, maybe somebody in my neighborhood, or maybe there's people I don't even know, but I know they need God's help. Maybe you're thinking of a missionary or, or something about missions that you've recently heard. Pray for those situations, but let's ask God to help other people. So I tell you what, take a few moments and pray for others. Okay, we're at the last letter, which is the letter Y. And the letter Y is you. Yeah, it's time for you to pray about anything that you might need prayer for. So take just a few moments and pray and ask God to help you with whatever it is that you're needing God's help. Do that right now. Hey, thank you so much for praying today. And let's take just a moment together and thank the Lord for answering prayers. I'll lead us in a prayer. Would you pray along with me? Lord, thank you that we can have a, a conversation with you. And God, thank you that you answer prayer. We leave these things that we've talked about and prayed about with you. And we're trusting God that you're gonna answer the prayer with exactly the right answer. And now Lord, Bless my friends, all those kids that are watching. Help them to have a great week this week. In Jesus' name, amen. You just got done watching River City Kids Online. If you liked what you saw, please like our page and share it. Maybe watch all the funny parts again. So join us next week when we have another River City Kids Online. Until then, see you guys later. Thank you.